partner. Good morning. I want to talk to you about how to eliminate 50% of your business worries. I have been running my business for 19 years, and I certainly should know the answers if anyone does. I want to be honest with you. I may not be able to help you eliminate 50% of your business worries because in the last analysis, no one can do that except yourself. What I can do is explain how other people have gone about it and leave the rest up to you. Many years ago, I read a book. One sentence stuck out from all the others. I remember the author saying, businessmen who do not know how to combat worry die young. Since worry is that serious, wouldn't you be satisfied if I could help you eliminate even 20% of your worries? I am going to show you how I got rid of not only half of my worries, but 75% of all the time I used to spend in conferences trying to solve business problems. For many years, I spent almost half of every business day holding conferences and discussing problems. I would become nervous. I would twist in my chair. I would pace the floor. I would be exhausted by the time evening came. I had expected to be doing this for the remainder of my life. I had been operating in this manner for so long, it never occurred to me there was a better method of handling it. If anyone had advised me that I could eliminate three quarters of all the time spent in those annoying conferences, and almost all of my anxieties, I would have thought that he was an armchair optimist. Yet, I developed a plan that accomplished just that. I have been using this plan for eight years, and it has performed wonders for my health and happiness. Is a brief for accomplish, Plish. Plish. good, and develop, walk, good, good. All right, for the record, let me tell you my secret. First, I quickly stopped relying on the method I had been using in my meetings for so many years. It began with my troubled associates reciting all the details of what had gone wrong and ended up asking, what shall we do? Second, I made a new rule. This rule, required everyone who wanted to present a problem to me to first prepare and submit a memo answering these four questions. The first question was, what is the problem? In the old days, we used to spend an hour or two in conference without anyone ever knowing precisely just what the real conflict was. We would work ourselves into a sweat, discussing our troubles, but never bothered to write out exactly what our problem was. The second question was, what is the cause of the problem? Whenever I think back on my career, I am amazed at the enormous amount of wasted hours I spent 
without ever trying to figure out the cause of my dilemma. The third question to be addressed was, what are all possible solutions to the problem? In the past, one person in the conference room would suggest one solution. Somebody else would argue about it. Tempers would flare. We would often get off the subject and at the conclusion of the meeting, no one would have written down all the various things we could do to attack the problem. The final question was, what re solution do you recommend? I used to go into a meeting with a man who had spent hours worrying about a problem and going in circles, but not once thinking through some real solutions and then writing them down. Now my associates rarely come to me with their problems because they have found that in order to answer those four questions, they have to collect all the facts and thoroughly think through their problems. After they have accomplished that, they discover in almost all cases, they don't have to consult with me at all because the obvious solution has popped out like a piece of bread popping out of an electric toaster. Less time is now spent in worrying and talking about what is wrong, and a lot more action is taken toward making those things right. A friend of mine told me not only has he reduced his business worries, but practically doubled his income by a similar method. When he first started to sell insurance years ago, he was filled with eagerness and love for his work. Then something happened. He became so discouraged that he despised his work and once thought of giving it up. He said he would have resigned right then if he had not decided to sit himself down and figure out the source of his predicament. His investigation showed the problem was he was not receiving high enough returns for the amount of calls he was making. He seemed to do pretty well at selling a prospect until the moment arrived for closing a contract. It almost always ended with the customers saying, I will think about it. Come see me tomorrow. It was the time he was wasting on follow-up calls that caused his depression. He promptly cut out all visits beyond the second and spent the rest of his time building new prospects. Those results were fantastic. Now, he writes millions of dollars worth of policies a year. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that is referred to right in the transcript that we have prepared for you here. He was asked if he had a medical history that would show us any prior injuries at all. He said, None at all, sir. He lied when he told us that in his deposition in this case. He gave answers that were false. He lied when he gave false answers to the interrogatories in this case. He lied 
when he told us in the courtroom that he hurt his low back on May 24 and felt a burning pain from his low back down into his left leg. I want to pause right here for a moment and show you that lie. First, we have item number one. This is the form he filled out the day of the accident. The nature of the injury is described as wrist and arm injuries. He told you that he had a low back injury. Item two shows us the records of the hospital where he was sent. And he said when he was admitted that it occurred at work when a box car hit his arm. You had it explained to you that we are talking about the arm and that we don't have these bones in our back. It was made very clear at that time. We can see that x-rays are taken of his arm. No x-rays are taken of his back. Back, just back, singular. Mm -hmm. We have prepared for the ladies. And okay, I'm repeating that now for the record. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that is referred to right in the transcript that we have prepared for you here. He was asked if he had a medical history that would show us any prior injuries at all. He said, none at all, sir. He lied when he told us that in his deposition in this case, he gave answers that were false. He lied when he gave false answers to the interrogatories in this case. He lied when he told us in the courtroom that he hurt his low back down into his left leg. I want to pause right here for a moment and show you that lie. First, we have item number one. This is the form he filled out the day of the accident. The nature of the injury is described as wrist and arm injuries. He told you that he He had a low back of the day of the accident. The nature of the injury is described as wrist and arm injuries. He told you that he had a low back injury. Item two shows us the records of the hospital where he was sent. And he said when he was admitted, that it occurred at work when a box car hit his arm. You had it explained to you that we are talking about the arm and that we don't have these bones in our back. It was made very clear at that time. We can see that x-rays are taken of his arm. 
no x-rays are taken of his back. Item three is the handwritten statement of the plaintiff. This is a statement that was taken on June 10, in which he says, my left forearm was struck hard. I felt an immediate and sharp pain in my arm, and I think in my back. I am not sure about the back pain. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that is something which is just a little less than a positive declaration that he had back pain then. He said that he felt a burning pain down his left leg coming from the low back. Mr. Beck was a witness. He told you that the man only told him of his arm and said nothing about his back. The people who worked with the plaintiff confirmed that he had an arm injury. They tell you nothing at all as far as hearing from him about a back injury. He lied when he told you in this court that his only prior testimony in a court was on June 29 in Santa Clara County. Then we went on to prove he had a prior lawsuit. It appears he filed two lawsuits from this same injury. Exactly why he did that, I do not know. Do something different, different topic here. This is a congressional. Ready? For the record, Mr. Chairman. For quite a long time now, I have enjoyed the privilege of being able to work with many members of this house. Our activities in the committees and on the floor of the house have allowed us to solve a lot of the problems that have faced the country. There have been many times when we have stood together, there have been some times when we have disagreed. During this time, we have come to know the basic views of one another. It is a long path that we have traveled in this place. I stand here today at this milestone along the road of our country's history. I want all of you to know the feeling I have in my heart. There is no group of men and women anywhere in the world for whom I have more admiration and a greater deal of respect. You have shown your faith in your country and your love for it over and over again. Your judgment and the decisions you have made have always been on the basis of what is best for the country. The debates we have over the best road for the nation to follow are good for the country. It is the way we do things in America and the country always gains when we follow this procedure. Different points of view are helpful in a free country. There is no dishonor when the disagreements we have are directed toward finding a better road for our country to follow in these new days. There is no dispute 
among the members of this house today, however, with regard to the need to give relief for the people who have been hit by the war. There is very little disagreement among the people of this country regarding the question of relief. It is the natural desire of all of the good people of America to see to it that all worthy human beings have food and clothing. We are willing to go further than that. We are willing to go to any reasonable extent to help any such individual to help himself and to support those who depend on him. Our people not only want to respond to this and are willing to respond to it, they demand we respond to it. The American people will not turn their backs to the needs and suffering of others in the world, no matter who they are or where they might be. The question that is facing us at this time, however, is not whether we shall respond to those problems in all parts of the world. The question we must deal with has to do with the machinery we shall use and the methods we shall employ to give the most effective and efficient relief that we can. This question of method is a serious one. Okay, carrying on for the record. State. Okay, carrying on for the record. State your name. I can't understand you. I didn't understand what you said. State your name for the record. I can't hear you. Do you think you could speak up? I can't understand you. All right. Do you believe this is loud enough? Do you understand me? Yes, I think so. You asked my name. Is that right? That is right. Do you think you can give us your full name? I believe so. I think that's good. I didn't hear you before. It's Joe Black. I can't remember if I asked this. Do you remember when the accident took place? I can't recall. I don't think it was this year. Do you have a date for me? Do you understand that I don't want you to guess? Do you believe you can give me the exact date? I understand it was a long time ago. I can't give you the date. Well, I didn't think it needed to be exact. I can't remember. Do you have any documents that state when the accident happened? I didn't remember to bring any. I didn't think I would need them. Do you have any at home? Do you know? Do you believe you could find them? I can't remember. 
I don't, didn't know I would need them. I don't believe so. Do you think you could look at home? I can't proceed without them. I believe I could. I can't recollect where they are. I think I have them. Do you recollect the plaintiff's name? You remember that part. Is that right? Yes, sir. I remember him. I can't recall the full name. I remember his first. What was that? Do you remember? Do you have his first name in mind? I think what happened was he called me after the accident happened. Do you understand that I need his name for the record? I think it's John. I can't think of his last name. I can't remember it. Do you think that could have been his attorney? Do you know who it was? I don't think so. I believe it was him. I think that's correct, sir. Do you understand that in order to proceed, we need this information? I can't help you if I don't recall. I didn't think it was that important. For the record, state your name. I can't understand you. I didn't understand what you said. State your name for the record. I can't hear you. Do you think you could speak up? I can't understand you. All right. Do you believe this is loud enough? Do you understand me? Yes, I think so. You asked my name. Is that right? That is right. Do you think you can give us your full name? I believe so. I think that's good. I didn't hear you before. It's Joe Black. I can't remember if I asked this. Do you remember when the accident took place? I can't recall. I don't think it was this year. Do you have a date for me? Do you understand that I don't want you to guess? Do you believe you can give me the exact date? I understand it was a long time ago. I can't give you the date. Well, I didn't think it needed to be exact. I can't remember. Do you have any documents that state when the accident happened? I didn't remember to bring any. I didn't think I would need them. Do you have any at home? Do you know? Do you believe you could find them? I can't remember. I don't, didn't know I would need them. I don't believe so. Do you think you could look at home? I can't proceed without them. I believe I could. I can't recollect where they are. I think I have them. Do you recollect the plaintiff's name? You remember that part. Is that right? Yes, sir. I remember him. I can't recall the full name. I remember his first. What was that? Do you remember? Do you have his first name in mind? I think what happened was he called me after the accident happened. Do you understand that I need his name for the record? I think it's John. I can't think of his last name. I can't remember it. Do you think that could have been his attorney? Do you know who it was? I don't think so. I believe it was him. I think that's correct, sir. Do you understand that in order to proceed, we need this information? I can't help you if I don't recall. I didn't think it was that important.